Perry after her fourth open heart surgery of her young life. I stand ready. Ever since I can remember, sports have just like been a huge part of our family dynamic. Basketball, soccer, tennis, like no matter what sport it was, I wanted to try it. But after my um, heart kind of made me quit those sports, I just focused in on softball and that's the sport I ended up falling in love with the most. So I was born with a congenital heart defect called aortic stenosis, which is um, the narrowing of your aortic valve. And I was able to go through most of my childhood um, surgery free and just monitoring the condition up until I was seven. And that's when I had my first open heart surgery when things kind of got to the point where they needed to operate on it and fix it. I always was like, oh, that would be so amazing if I played for UCLA. Since I was a little girl, like I would watch them on TV and the big tournament. By the grace of God, they offered me a walk-on like roster position. Obviously, it was hard being a student athlete and balancing school and sport. So that's when I found Elevation. Came across a random Instagram feed of Stephen Furtick, and I was like, dang, who is this guy? And I would watch every single Sunday or every road trip that I had with my teammates and friends, and I actually like started a Bible study. I continued playing softball, um, you know, pushing my body to its limits every single day. And my senior year, um, we had made the postseason. I went for like a routine checkup with my cardiologist. And that's when he told me the news that my valve had become severe again, both leaking and narrowed, and that it would need to be fixed immediately. We couldn't wait. We ended up coming to a compromise and we were able to push or hold off on the surgery until after I graduated um, and was given the opportunity to finish out my senior season and ultimately win a national championship. A little flare, and that will get down in front of a view. Prober to the plate, the throw, and she's safe. And UCLA back on top with a 12th national championship. When we were forced to come home and kind of isolate in our home as a result of COVID, I had um, my fourth open heart surgery, 15 hours, but the blood infection attacked all of my valves and machinery in my heart, and I was in the hospital for like 28 days after that. So it was super dark every single day, just being in that tiny little confined space. I was fearful, one, to die because no one really knew how they would get me better. They didn't know what was going on inside my body. And, and then also loneliness. I just had this pit in my stomach and I just felt so alone. I was super frustrated and bitter and mad at God. You know, there were times where I was like, I don't want to be here anymore. I don't care if I wake up tomorrow. Um, like, God, take me, I'm ready to go to heaven kind of thing. And my loved ones would bring me like devotionals and I would watch um, messages, especially Stephen's message. I think it's called Lonely Places. That one kept popping up on my YouTube feed and I just rewatched it and rewatched it and rewatched it because I know that God put that video there on my feed again because he knew my situation and he knew I needed to hear those words. Some of you are sitting in a loneliness that was not chosen in this season of your life. God said to tell you he'll meet you in your lonely place. I would log on every Sunday and like type my situation um, in the chat and people would pray for me and reach out to me. I typed in the chat that I wanted to surrender my life to him. That was kind of my salvation moment in that hospital room. And I received messages and love and support from other individuals in that chat just reminding me that he still has me here for a purpose and for a reason and to just keep hanging on. Even though it was literally the lowest I've ever been, deep down I knew that God was using it for a greater purpose and he was doing a bigger work in me and through me. And yeah, life has been really hard, but despite all the adversity I've faced and have overcome, like I wouldn't be here if it weren't for him and for my relationship with him. I don't think there's any better time than now to give my life to Jesus and to get baptized. Hey, how are you? Dad, I thank you so much for seeing me. I thank you for just the incredible testimony that you've given her God and probably one of the strongest people that I've ever met God. And I pray that you would always remind her God that you have every step of better for planned out God and that you have good plans for her God. Father, Son, Holy Spirit.